Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, maximum palindromes after operations. The problem is all about making a few observations and uh, if you are able to come up with these observations, it's very easy to solve. So as always, we'll start from scratch, understand step by step how to come up with those observations and solve the problem. So let's get started. The problem states that you are given zero indexed string array words having length n and containing zero index strings. Now you are allowed to perform the following operations any number of times. You will, you will choose four integers i, j, x and y where i and j is between zero and n and x should be less than the length of the ith word and j should be less than uh, x, y should be less than the length of the jth word and you will swap those two characters. So basically you can take any two string from words and swap any characters of those two words, right? And because i and j are not related, they can be equal, which in turn implies that you can swap characters of the same string as well. Now, after performing some operation, you have to return an integer denoting the maximum number of palindromes words can contain, right? So let's say words is a, b, a, b, a, a, B, 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 A and A, A. So in this case, what you can do, you can simply swap this A with this B and the string would become B, 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 B. This will become A, A and this will become A. So in total, we'll have three palindromes in the word and three can be the maximum number of palindromes because there are only three strings in the words. So hence the answer here is three. So let's take one more example. Let's say the word is C, D, E, F, and A. In this case, no matter how you do operations, you will not be able to make more than one palindrome. And hence the answer here is one. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now, how to solve this? Let's say you have these five or six strings and you want to return the maximum number of palindromes. The only thing that we have in hand is this operation and we can use it any number of times we want. So what does this operation denotes? You, this denotes you take two characters and swap them, right? So what does that mean? This mean that let's say you want to take this character and put it somewhere in this string. It is possible. Basically, even though this character belongs to the first string, this character can go anywhere across this seven string. This can go in the same string at any other place. This can go in the second string at any other place and so on and so forth. So basically each character in every string is independent. Doesn't matter where they initially belong. You have the power to put, pick this character and put it anywhere across the seven string. So let's simplify the problem then. Let's say we now no, don't have uh, the characters filled already. We want to make, we want to fill characters and let's just count the number of characters we have. So we, we have a one, two, three, four, five, five times. So we have a five times and similarly B, we have eight times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I think I missed one. Yeah, this one, eight. So we have B eight times and so on and so forth. So basically we count the number of characters and we are saying because they are independent of each other, you can pick any one of them and pick and fill it in anywhere. So now you have transformed the problem to given some spaces, you need to fill some characters there such that at the end you have maximum number of these seven string as palindromes, right? So if you haven't reached at this observation during the contest, this is the right time to pause and try to proceed by yourself. So now that we have these strings or these spaces to fill, we know how to make palindromes. That's very easy. You just take, uh, let's say you want to make this one as palindrome. What you need is one pair of equal character, then second pair of equal character, and finally, third pair of equal character. And then you can pick, you can fill anything here. It doesn't matter, right? So you need 
three pairs and these three pairs can be independent and once you have filled these three pairs you can put any character here and it should this string should be palindrome right now let's forget about this for now for a moment right and let's focus on this particular scenario let's say there there is a similar problem it's just that number of strings are four and these are the characters so we want maximum number of palindromes right so let's say we have this four a's here so if you want to make this string as palindrome what you will do you will put a and a here you will put again another a and another a here and then you will say okay i don't care what which which character it will be you will either pick b c d e f or g anything you can pick and this string will be a palindrome right now if you do this notice you don't have any more a remaining so if you fill or if you start filling the characters here this at the end the first string will be palindrome and the last string will be palindrome because the last string has just length one so it will be palindrome no matter what you fill here so in total you are able to make two palindromes but your target was to make as many palindromes as possible so in this case you can do better let's say you haven't filled a's here instead you filled a's here right so in this case these two will be palindrome and this will be palindrome regardless and then the first one will not be a palindrome because you don't have any uh, equal characters remaining to fill up uh, the mirror images so in other words it always makes sense to make the smaller one as palindrome because to make a palindrome both the string require equal uh, or equal criteria you only need to fill the first half of the string equals to the second half of the string and that's it so whatever you are filling here the same thing you can fill in string of lesser size as well and if you start from the lesser size string the chances of you making more number of palindromes increases right because you are doing exactly same thing with the lesser size string so only thing is if the string size is less you will require less number of pairs so the chances of you making more number of palindrome increases so this is the first observation basically we will start making palindromes from the smaller length to the larger length right so we will try to make this one a palindrome first and then we will try to make this one as palindrome and then we will try to make this one as palindrome and so on and so forth so now that we have made this observation let's move forward we now know we have to make uh, sorry before making the first one as palindrome we have to uh, make the last ones or the ones which are small which are smaller length palindrome first so in this particular case we have we will make this one as palindrome first and we'll move upward right so let's say you want to make this one as palindrome you can skip this one for sure because this no matter what you fill here it will be palindrome now let's say you want to make this as palindrome right so what you what you will fill here what you need you need two equal characters and then one character of your choice it doesn't matter so one of the ways could be let's say you decide to fill all b's here okay this is a valid way you can you have eight way eight b's you can fill three b's here no issues and this will be a palindrome right but you will never want to do this why i would encourage you to pause and try to think for a moment so hope you thought about it so the answer lies in the fact that you want pairs or in other words the character which occur odd number of times can be used or should be used as the middle character or should be used as a character which doesn't matter at all because the characters which occur even number of times those characters are required to make 
or to fill the first and the last position or the mirror mirror images uh, of a particular character so if you waste this character which are uh, which can or which is in pair you are wasting one opportunity to fill a mirror image and hence you may be able to make less number of palindrome so let's understand this with an example let's say you have 2b 1 uh, 2a 1b and 1c so in this case let's say you start with this and uh, you fill this with a right so we have to start with the smallest one right let's say you started with the smallest one and you fill this with a now once you have filled this with a there is no other way like you just have one a one b one c no matter how you fill this a b and c here this will not be a palindrome and hence at the end you are able to make just one palindrome now why that happened because the rec the places where the a can be filled you can't use b or c because there you will require pair but the opposite is true the place where you have filled a which was which was already in pair you can skip a there and fill b or c it will not matter at all right so in this case if you have filled b here or c here then you would have left with two a's that you have that you would have filled here and then the remaining one which is c in this case you will fill here and this both the two string will be a palindrome right so this is the second observation basically you will not break the pairs until it is absolutely needed right let's say in this case everyone is pair let's say there were there were two a's and two b's right and there is no c so in that case both the characters are in pair and you want to fill something here sure you can take any one of them make it uh, make like break one of the pairs and fill it because that is required so that is possible but if you have a individual character or a character which doesn't have a pair always choose that character to fill a independent character okay so this is the second observation that is we will fill the characters or we'll start filling the characters such that we'll choose the one which is not in pair to fill the independent characters and we will always preserve or we will always try to preserve the one which are in pairs for actually filling up the mirror images right so now that we know where to start from and what to fill so the other problem is very easy you know you have to start from the bottom and you also know what to fill here you can fill anything but if this is an independent character you will always try to fill the one which doesn't exist in pair if it is not an independent character and you actually want pair so in this case let's say you wanted pair so you can take any character which occur in pair you can either take e d doesn't matter because at the end what only you want is this character should be equals to this character so once you uh, like follow this uh, through to the entire string you can fill up the entire strings and then figure out how many palindromes it has so let's just do one small diagram before concluding so we have to fill this uh, six strings or seven strings such that the maximum we will have maximum number of palindromes right so let's start from the bottom right we want to fill something here and this can be independent this doesn't need to be a pair so what you will fill you can fill a or you can fill d or you can fill k any one of these you can fill but you will not fill b c or e here because they exist or all of their uh, uh, characters are in pairs right so you will either fill a d or k let's say you fill a here right so in this case the number of a's that you have now is reduced by 1 so number of a's you have is 4 right now you want to fill a pair okay 
now let's take a pair which one which one you want to take and you can take anything let's uh, say we choose a again so in this case uh, we'll decrease this a by 2 and fill a, a here right now we want one independent character so will you pick a the answer is no will you pick b no c no d yes we can pick d here so let's just take d and fill it here right notice you can you could have taken k as well but that doesn't matter so now the number of d we have remaining is 2 let's take this one again you want a pair 2 occurs in pair so you can uh, sorry a occurs in pair so you can take a here so let's just fill a and a here and make it 0 so there is no more a remaining now you want independent character which one of you of this will you take answer is k you will because that's the only one which doesn't occur in pair right now so number of k is also 0 now now you want to fill a pair again right so which one of these will you take doesn't matter anyone you can take which occur, which occurs in pair so let's say you take b here so if you take b this will become 6 now you also have to fill another pair so in this case let's say you take another another b so in this case this number of b's you have is now 4 and everything you have filled here with b so that's fine now you want two more pairs right so let's take two more pairs you can take two b's completely so this number of b's will now become 0 let's fill these four characters as b now you want an independent character so which one of these C, D, E you will take? The answer is none of them has an independent character or none of these has a character which doesn't have its pair. So it doesn't matter. You can break any one of the pair because once you break the pair, what you will get? You will get two characters, one which one you will use here and you will get one character which, you will, which will not exist in pair. So let's say you break this C here. So number of C you have now is 3, right? And you will you filled C here. Now let's come to the final one. In this case, you want 1 pair, 2 pair, 3 pair. So you want 3 pairs in total. So let's just take 3 pairs. 1 pair of C is there. So let's take 1 pair of C. Number of C remaining would be 1. You have one pair of D, so let's just take one pair of D, and you have one pair of C, one pair of E as well. Let's take one pair of E as well. So one pair of C, one pair of D, and finally one pair of E. Uh, now you want one independent character, and you just have one independent character C. So at, at the, after filling all of these, we say that okay, we are able to make all the seven as palindrome, and hence seven is the answer, right? So hope the solution makes sense if you have watched this point i would strongly encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself so next we're looking at the code so the code is exactly what we discussed the only difference is uh, i instead of uh, figuring out what character to fill i just uh, converted these string into even and non-even characters because what character to fill is also not required like the problem doesn't ask us to figure out what are the string at the end right so we don't care which characters to fill so i just simplified it one step further during the contest but in general you can follow this approach and you will get each or what is the final string you will have with that max number of palindromes right so here the first thing we do is find the character counts so we have this ch count which contains the character counts we iterated over all the string in the words and for each string we added all its character and incremented the character count now secondly we also maintain the length of each string because notice uh, we have to start from the bottom that is we have to start from the length of the string which which we have to start from the string which have the smallest length so we push every length into a array and sorted it now we have to start filling this length one by one starting from the zeroth character, uh, 0th, uh, index so i figured out how many pairs i have and how many non pairs i have 
So for that, uh, I just do even plus equals i by 2 and odd plus equals i modulus 2 not equals to 0. Basically, this will denote whether the current character has a non-pair character or not. Right? Now, once you have done this, you will start filling the character or uh, filling the string starting from the smallest length. So I started with the smallest length string. Figured out how many even or how many and how many odd are required. Basically, how many pairs are required? This is i by 2. And how many non or how many independent characters are required? So, again, this is required only when the string is of odd length. Now, if I don't have enough pairs, then I can't make the current string palindrome. And if I can't make the current string palindrome, no matter what I can, what I will do, I will not be able to make the next string as palindrome as well because next string is greater than the current string. So we'll simply break. But if we have enough pairs available with us, we'll just use those pairs for the current string. Now, after that, we have some requirement of odds as well. So if we have enough number of independent characters which are required, again, this will only be one at any given point. So if we don't have this, we have to break one pair. So we just break one pair and we got two independent strings or two independent characters. We use one of the characters here uh, and do result plus plus. Again, this request odd at any given point of time will be one or zero. If it is zero, you will never come here uh, or rather you will never go into this if loop. But if it is one, you may go into the if loop depending on how many independent characters you have. So. After filling the odd and even ones, you will increment the number of string that you can make palindrome. And after this entire loop ends, this result will contain the total number of strings that can be made palindrome and you will return that as an answer. So notice here we are not able to or we, are, we don't care actually what are those palindromic strings. And with this uh, operation, you can even create those strings as well on the fly. This will take at max order of n into 26 time if you do it very naively that is for each uh, character you are iterating over all the over the entire string to figure out which one to use so in worst case this can take order n into 26 which is fine right so hope this entire solution makes sense if you have any doubts feel free to post them in the comment section below i would be happy to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already i will see you in the next one thank you